Hello everybody and welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vaynerchuk. And we're going to taste some wine today. But first, got to talk about a couple things. Numero uno. I have to thank everybody for the comments and the love that you guys are sending me via email and in the comments. You guys are getting me through this. Because you know what? Point number two is, I think I've made it. i got a lot of cool things to share with you. Yesterday I got six emails that said I sucked, I had no charm, I, I, I knew nothing about wine, I'm confused, I'm a bum, I'm a loser. And even one that said I'm a jock tasting wine like it's beer. That guy I want to thank. I love being a jock. Um, that all being said, I challenge every single person who sends me negative publicity to a blind tasting. Let's see who knows something. Now, let's move on to something else. Wine. We've got five wines, 90 plus points, all rated 90 and above. Huge debate always in the wine business, and I'm going to do this 90 point thing often because I think it brings real value, and I, I think that's why you watch WLTV. Real value to the fact that, you know, Wines that score 90 are always perceived to be awesome, and sometimes they're all over the place. I have three low-end wines, two very high-end wines. So it'll be fun to really kind of taste them and see how they match up against themselves and with the scores and how they really come through on the tasting today. So, without further ado, I'm going to go to wine numero uno, which is the Maggio Sangiovese. It's 100% Sangiovese, 2004 vintage, 90 points Parker, 7 bucks. I mean, let's be honest, what gets you 7 bucks? What can you get for seven bucks these days? A pack of cigarettes, you know, some, some bottled water, seven dollars. So this is a real bargain, price-wise. And considering a 90-point score from Robert Parker, most heralded wine critic in the world, this should be an absolute steal. We are sen selling tons of this wine. So let's get into it. Really dark, great, great color. Nice nose. Phenomenal hint of licorice, very obvious. Smells like a Twizzler wrapped up and shoved in your nose. I mean, just really, really nice. Very obvious, actually. A lot of cherry, little cherry cola aspect to it. This wine comes from the Molise area, and it's got a really nice flavor profile. 12.5% alcohol. It's a little medium-bodied. The mid-palate is something to be left desired, but, you know... Not bad. I mean, considering it's $7, an absolute steal. I'm not going to go as high as Bob at 90 points. I probably would stick in that 85 to 88 range, but that's a great value for $7. So do I think it's overrated? I do think it's overrated. But in retrospect, it's still a great value. It brings a lot of tannins, a lot of nice structure, real crisp kind of a finish. I'm, I'm just really impressed. It's an overall excellent wine for the price. I would absolutely recommend it. It's a great pizza wine. You can definitely drink this watching the big game. And so, um, I like this wine. It's a, I recommend it, but I do think it's overrated. Let's move on. Falesco, 2004, Umbrian, red, the Vitiano. Very famous blend. You know, it's their Cab Merlot blend that, you know, gets huge scores every year. I think almost everybody watching WLTV right now has either seen this wine or talked about this wine. It's extremely famous. I mean, it's, it's nine, eight, nine dollars, and it's, Always scored very high. A very famous bottle of wine. Let's, uh, let's look at it. Great color. Very dark. Smells horrible. Very kind of um, like a mix between... It's a very funky nose. Kind of like a sweaty feet, you know? And that's a lot of fun. Um, yeah, horrible nose. Unattractive. Not even vegetal or interesting in any way other than... It smells stinky. Locker room jockstrap stinky. Just not fun. Wine Spectator is completely out of their mind on this wine. Um, at best, this is an 85 point wine. It's very awkward on the mid palate. The flavors are all over the place. It's completely unbalanced. It's a little. Yeah, yeah, it's just a little awkward. You know, I mean, this is just a pass. I don't want to really bash it for the fact that I'll get a lot of hate mail, but this is definitely not recommended. It's got a little spritziness to it that I don't enjoy. I'm just shocked that this wine can receive 90 points from a spectator. Let's pass. Let's just move on. It's a waste of time. Let's move on. Castano Hecula from the Yecla. You know, a lot of cool words here. But more importantly, this wine is made from 100% Montestrel, which is Mavedra. They call it Montestrel in Spain. 
90 points RP, Mr. Parker. Great nose. Great, great nose. Wow, real powerful nose, strawberry jam, like a Polaner's strawberry jam jar. Just take your hand in it, eat it. Great texture. Um, wow, this is nine dollars. Nine bucks, and it packs a twenty dollar punch. I'm very impressed with this wine. I've had a lot of problems with some of the 90 point Spanish scored wines that are under $10. I've seen a lot of things fall in their face and be major disgraces. But this, on the other hand, you gotta flip the switch on. This is worth twice the price that it is. It is completely exceptional. The peanut gallery, extremely exceptional. Tons of complexity. Very interesting Asian spice. There's a lot of spiciness to this wine. Little pepper, bell pepper, green pepper, um, you know. What I love is there's a clear-cut cedar nose. So you know what? Let's do this. Go into a steam room, close the door, don't turn on the steam, just that cedar outline, grab a strawberry, put pepper on it, and eat it, smell everything around you, that's what this wine is. I'm telling you, this is spectacular juice. $9, a steal. Find this wine. Luckily, they make like a billion cases. You should be able to find this at any shop near your door. So definitely try this wine. Yeah, the, the bouquet, I mean, this is... This is what real wine is, and for $9, an absolute positive bargain. Like this one. So, uh, before I get wine on it, I have a t-shirt. It's pink. It says, I drink the pink stuff. WineLibrary.com. I'm going to give it to you for free. First person to tell me, first person to tell me what date WineLibrary.com launched in the comment section, don't email me, in the comment section, I want the date, that's all you gotta say, of the day we launched, you can find it, if you're savvy, you get the t-shirt for free. If you win, email me, I'll send it away. Brandon M, your t-shirt should be there. Let us know if you got it. Let's move on. Renard, the Tres Ninos Red, which is a blend between Cabernet, Petit Syrah, and Syrah. 40 bones for this bad boy. 91 points, RP. And you know what? Holy crap. I mean, are you kidding me? Look at this color. Pitch black, Napa Valley black. Napa Valley black is a term I like to use because so many of the wines are not coming out purple or red. They're coming out black. This has huge color. This is New World fruit. You can just tell, oh man, this is going to be fun. What a great nose. It's almost like, um... This reminds me of uh, Skittles. I like to use Skittles a lot because that's a real candy that has a real bouquet. When you just open up and just get in there, real nice. It's got a lot of that, a lot of really juicy, brand new cherries, like ripe cherries from a tree. You've got that real obvious flavor coming through. Black jam. I mean, this is loaded on the nose. If you're a traditionalist, please press pause. Hey, New World guys, this stuff rocks. Tons of fruit, explosive. I mean, jammy, you can drink this, you can eat this. This is loaded, but it's not for those old school guys. This is New World fruit. This is for the people that like California cold wines. This is in your mouth. This actually rivals the match that we had the other day. And I actually think it's a little less money. It is scored lower, but forget that. I'm telling you right now, I'm drinking this wine. This wine is amazing loaded with amazing fruit. It's got a real clear-cut eucalyptus on the finish, really long finish. Eat this with a steak and just say to yourself, that Gary Vaynerchuk's a good guy. I'm glad he recommended this to me. Guys, this is a winner. I get this 94 points. I think Parker missed a bone on this one. This is underrated, massive. I'm just new world all the way. Old world people, come back. So the complexity is fine and serious, and this is a very upstanding wine. Let's move on. Penfolds, Bin 707, 2002 Cabernet Sauvignon. This wine retails between $65 and $90 retail, and probably like $200 on a lot of wine lists. So, pretty expensive wine, 100% cab, 91 points Parker. Parker also said that this is one of the finest efforts from these guys in decades. So, let's see if Bob's right. Okay. 
This is the term I'm going to use, and I haven't had a chance to use it. I use it in the real world. I haven't had wine that's had this characteristic yet. And when I say this, I'd like you to comment on this if you agree with me. I use this a lot. Some people have really been pumped when I've used this and agree with me. This smells milky. I don't know what the heck that means. I know that's from the oak, and I understand where it comes from, but it's just my term. It smells milky. Sometimes Cabernets, because of the over-oakness, get that milk quality to me. So I, that's what I'm getting. This smells milky. It smells like milk. Milk with some grapes in it. You know, it's, it's really interesting. The color is phenomenal. And I like the milky smell, don't get me wrong. Black currant, hints of cassis, well made, solid wine. A little bit of cherry as well. I get a little bit of a cedar box. I'm on the cedar kick today, I guess, but definitely a cedar box, like a cigar box. I buy them at flea markets sometimes. They're fun. You know, it's got that kind of smell. Um, I don't know, though. Not for the price for me on this one. 91 points Parker. I'm going to say overrated it. I'm going to give it 89. It's a nice, solid bottle of wine, but, but, you know, it's new world. It's not traditional. This is not about traditional against the fruit bomb that I just had. You know, I taste enough wine that I can really handle that matchup. I just think it's not eventful. It's solid. It's good wine, but it's uh, it's nothing special, and I would not recommend it today on WLTV. So, there's some you know speaker action going on. Let's hit the questions of the day. Let's go to them. Douglas says, among other things, Gary and anyone else who wants to jump in, do your wine appetites change as the seasons change? Doug. Mine do. You know, when it gets 100 degrees outside, I definitely go for white wine. I like champagne and white wine year-round, so it's not just a summer thing with me. But obviously, if it's over 100 degrees, it's tough for me to open a big monster red like the Renard. So my appetite does change subtly. I'm not a fan, if you can't tell, of the rules. I drink calves with fish. I drink, you know, Alsatian whites with steak. Forget those rules. But with the seasons, yeah, sometimes if it's really hot... I mean, if it's really cold, I can still drink a Chardonnay, a cold one. It doesn't bother me. It's only on the stream weathers of heat that I do find myself affected. Next, LSG says, Gary, here's a good question. How do you handle decanting a wine to a BYOB, which is very prevalent here in the Short Hills area? I've started to open bottles in my cellar two to three hours prior to dining, then recorking it. What are your thoughts? Here's what I like to do. If it's very serious wine, Depending on what your budget is, maybe $50 is very serious, maybe $5,000 is very serious. If it's very serious in my book, what I tend to like to do is run the bottle to the restaurant beforehand. Now, I have a lot of connections with salespeople and friends and other people in the industry, so it's easy for me to find somebody who can run a bottle from the store or from my apartment to the restaurant as I'm on my way to work. If you don't have that, you have to drive there. But what I love to do is open a bottle at 9 o'clock and let it decant at the restaurant. So by the time I get there at 6 o'clock, it's really rocking and open and ready to go. The other thing you can do is open the wine before you do it. I Sometimes when I'm in a bind or something just came up, I will open a bottle here on this table, just leave it open, or decant it, and then filter it back into the bottle, or just leave it open, depending if I'm decanting or not, and then just pop the cork back in and drive into the restaurant. Now, you hope you don't get pulled over, and you know that's obviously a thing that could happen, but um, I put it in a trunk in a freezer. Finally, the last thing you can do is open it at your apartment or home and do the same thing as I do here in the shop. All are good things, especially if it's serious and you really want to enjoy it. Finally, the bear says... Why would anybody care about such a dumb movie, speaking of snakes on a plane? The bigger issue is, how many games will the Jets win? I say the bigger concern. My guess is 6-10 and 10 season. The Bear, the Jets will be 16-0 and 0 this year. We will match the Dolphins, and we will become the only, the second team ever to be undefeated. Mark it down and play back this video. I'm going to be on SportsCenter for this video. Finally, my question of the day. Which person influenced you the most in wine drinking? Who's the person that turned you on to wine? What is the moment, the people? Tell me a little bit about the way you got into this funny game of wine. I really would like to hear from you, and it's really important to me because I want to know how you got into it. I got into it because it was a family business. Let me know how you did. Finally, rate me, and don't give me an 85. It makes me cry. We'll see you next time on WLTV.